Okay, welcome back to hanging with Mang. My name is Mang. And today we are playing uh, Uncharted. The OG Uncharted. I finished um, The Last of Us Remastered. Here. Fantastic game. Really solid stuff. Uh, and I was like, oh, you know, Naughty Dog, uh, they make good shit. Uh, I haven't played the original Uncharted in ages. I probably wouldn't mind playing the other ones again, so I picked up the... Open. See if you can jam it from the other side. The on a remastered Uncharted set for PS4. And here we are. All right, let go. This um... Hurry, Sully! All right, so um, this is not a uh, <laughs> a live hanging with Mang. You know, this looks familiar. I think there's something in Drake's journal about this. Because I had a I had a wedding today, and when I got back, yeah, I had to is. watch Microsoft like E3 conference. Kind of lamp or brazier. See if you can light it. And then that well, went right into the, the Bethesda E3 in conference, here. and now here we are. So, uh. I'm not going to talk about E3 at this point. I'll do one of my full recap videos where I go through all the announcements and just discuss it for an hour and a half. Uh, those are always fun to do. We gotta figure a way to clear this debris. And. So yeah, that'll come probably Wednesday or so. This wood's pretty dry. I bet we could burn it. I would imagine. Um, but this week on this channel we had the infectious madness of Doctor Decker, which has been an amusing little. Try shooting one of those lamps down. Nice. Amusing little LP. I'm enjoying that. I think some of you are enjoying watching that. Of course, we got Final Fantasy VIII. Final Fantasies don't stop. And... I'm dead. Uh, I'm leaving on vacation this Friday. Which... Shit. Which means... Uh... It's hard to say exactly what that means. Um, you know, I'm doing extra work for the exploring series to make sure that that's all good to go. That's that's important to me because that pays the bills. Uh, but as for this channel, I mean, of course there's going to be Final Fantasies because I can just queue all that shit up. Aside from that. I don't know. I mean, we'll see if I have time to record extra Dr. Deckers. I don't know what'll happen with that. But yeah, I'll be gone uh, on vacation for eight days. So it doesn't mean this next Sunday, I'll have to do a, a hanging with Mang on vacation from Colorado because I can't miss a week that would be that would be bad um, so whether I do that live or just record it depends sort of on the internet connection I have there let's get going if it's a really shit internet connection then it might just be a small hanging with mang update um i can't imagine i'll have that much to talk about but who knows but either way there will be final fantasies in your near future uh over on the exploring series i put out a video sort of it uh 
explaining these references in these mysterious videos that popped up. Basically, this is the exploring SCP. Is these 40-minute vlogs. I know is not how people would want to do it, but that's how I'm doing it. The order of these signs has some importance. Um... Yeah, no, I, I got that. It's just... Um, ba, 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 ba. So, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I actually lost a crap number of subscribers uh, when I released that video. For whatever reason, people were really... Not happy about it. Uh, but it's stabilizing now. We're moving on. It's... It's gonna be a questionable series. You know, it's not... Oh, okay. Here we go. You know, it's not formatted the same way. It's not even titled anything related to SCP. So, really, the people watching are going to be the diehard fans. Uh, I don't know. You know, the point of doing it was because I thought it was fun. So, I guess I got to just stick with that. No, that can't be right. Maybe that was right. And, um... Yeah, not much to say about that, really. You know, it's not... Of course, there is a plot occurring with all the, uh, the SCP going nons and stuff, but uh, we're really in the very early stages, so we can't get into that too much. So I just want to explain some of the references I'm making to set up for the future. Uh, and I mentioned in the thing, like, that I can't delete the videos, that I didn't upload them, I can't hide them, I've been talking to YouTube and they can't delete it, you know, some, maybe there's some hacking going on. Um, and there's, a, of course, you know, a good number of people that know that I'm just making this up because it's an interesting story, which is what SCP is. You know, it's people making shit up because it's interesting. That, yeah, that's what looks SCP like there's a ladder is. To the side. So right it's here, not like I'm it crazy for doing this. Right. Like it's just in line careful. with the series. Hey, watch your step down there. Uh, but then there were a few people that were like, "Oh man, that's really shitty. You got hacked." You know, but. You know, we're, you know, our, your loyal fans are going to stick with you. You know, just one guy was like, just let us know which videos uh, uh, you didn't authorize and we'll downvote them. And, you know, so that they they just fall, you know, they go into oblivion or whatever. And it's like, yeah, that's not how downvoting works. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, there, there okay. seem to be a, a handful Somewhere. of people that are convinced that I have been hacked. And uh, I was telling the truth there, so I guess I'm a pretty good actor. Oh, don't tell me you're gonna swim in that. I've been in worse. Just fall down, you nincompoop. Ah! Why do you scream like that? Um, but yeah. You know, we'll see where that goes. Um, I'd like to get another strange video up this week, but I don't know. I'm going to be kind of busy. I got two videos that I have to work on and finish this week. And I leave Friday, so I have to move my head schedule ahead up. I have to move my schedule up a little bit, and so I, I don't know. I don't even have a script for it. I haven't really thought of I mean, I have an idea. But I don't have a script at all for that, so... 
I made it. Um, Can you get this open? If I don't do it this week, there's gonna be a that's a big break between these these sort of strange videos popping up. Which maybe is okay, but nice I don't want people work. to just forget about the whole concept. So we'll see what I can do. Uh, but this week I worked on a video for I the Morrigan. Who's sort of the Celtic goddess of death. Was it? Uh, the Celtic goddess of war and death and fate and stuff. Pretty interesting. This looks safe. Not a, not a shabby video. And so this week I'll be working on uh, some Celtic thing. The Children of Lear, maybe? Uh, I'm not sure. As well as... Uh, an Elder Scrolls video about I'm okay. the wheel, the towers, wow, and Kemp. Like we're getting somewhere. After that, we better be. So that'll be a strange video. Moving on, um, played a bunch more Netrunner this week. I'm enjoying that. Um, oh man, the temple must have been built around this. You know, playing against my mom, it's really not a fair competition. And so I try to make her like gold statue. the best Huge decks that I can find statue. that are also simple here, enough that she's not people, like, it's not like some crazy combo or something like that. I think uh, and I try to find just like the worst decks that I can make model. the golden man that are still it like wasn't a city playable. It was this. It was a golden idol. Man. Because you, you can make a pretty unplayable deck now. in Netrunner over here, tracks. on either side. I bet the Where it's just like, you don't have any money, you're, you're not doing anything, and it's just We're lame as shit. For this party. So um, the trail's cool. And I don't want to do that because I want to have fun with the game. So I'm bitch. finding sort of odd decks, you know. Unless. Unless what? Uh, like we shitty, janky combo decks uh, that can win, but it's not incredibly likely. Uh, so it lets me try a bunch of different decks that are that I would normally never really play with so that's been fun um, I bought the revised core set of course because it exists uh, I was debating about getting that the revised core set but then they announced huh they stop here the end of Netrunner is the end of Android Netrunner Basically, must have made themselves a Fantasy Flight Games treasure. owns the rights to wow. the Android universe. Um, so they've published a few games in the Android universe, uh, starting with, like, Android, uh, New Wait, Angeles, I think Infiltration, and, of course, Netrunner. There's something you don't see every day. So that's all in the Android universe that Fantasy Flight owns. But they don't own Netrunner. They don't own the game Netrunner. That is owned by Wizards of the Coast. But there's also another company involved that I forgot the name of uh, that originally made Netrunner or something like that. But basically, the agreement between Fantasy Flight and Wizards ended. Let's check it out, huh? No, uh, wait, wait, wait. Something about this feels kind of hinky. No one knows why. Hinky. Uh, they didn't say why. Like you've never seen a German uh, the of the from the sounds of it, um, from the way things serious, are, man. I think the <laughs> I common what, guess is that here? Wizards check it out ended the agreement oh, rather than Fantasy Flight. Yeah, right. Fantasy Flight you just released the revised core wait, edition. Wait, wait, wait. Um, they're coming out with a brand new big box expansion. Okay. You know, it seemed like they still had renewed plans for Android, but Wizards pulled it for some reason. That's that's the common guess. Um, as for why Wizards would want to get back Netrunner, some said it's like competition for Magic the Gathering, but that really cannot be the case because Netrunner is not nearly as big as it was, you know, you, like five years ago or four years ago. 
Uh, it's not really in a resurgence, I would say. So it seems odd that they would suddenly consider that. Uh, like some people speculate the that the they want to do... They want to make a new version of Netrunner, but put it in the cyberpunk universe in collaboration with, like, CD Projekt Red, who's putting out the new cyberpunk game. Um, so, kind of like, you have, they have Gwent as, like, a digital card game. For cyberpunk, they would have Netrunner. I don't know. Um, basically, we're never going to get a digital, a proper digital version of Android Netrunner. It's never going to happen. Because the Android part is with one company and the Netrunner part is with another company. So maybe we can get a Netrunner digital card game. But it would be a different game. Maybe, like, probably very similarly mechanically. What the hell was that, Drake? Um, you know, Android Netrunner is based on a much older game called Netrunner. That's very similar. Some cards are even, like, just copy-pasted into Android Netrunner from the original game. Um, it's pretty damn similar. A lot of terminology is the same. But for Android Netrunner, they did do some additions. Like, the fact that there's, like, different factions. Like, there's, like, four different corp factions and three different runner factions. That's new to Android Netrunner. Um... But, you know, some say that Fantasy Flight should just, like, make Android the card game or, you know, something like that. And just make Netrunner but call it something else. Uh, which... <laughs> uh, apparently, some people say you can't copyright mechanics and then other people are like, no, what do you, of course you can copyright mechanics. Uh, so I don't know what to believe about that, but. You know, if Wizards of Coast, as unlikely as it is, redid Netrunner, you know, um, rebooted it, and came out with a proper digital version, whether in connection with Cyberpunk 2077 or not, um... That could be really cool. But for now, Android Netrunner is dead. Uh, and so I heard that. That was being discussed. And I was like, oh, shit. Um, that means nothing else of this is going to get printed. So uh, I was like, okay, I'm going to get in on this while I can then. And I ordered the revised core set. What the fuck was that? Oh my god. They definitely made improvements on this series as they went along. So the revised core set seems pretty nice. Um, there's really no difference in the tokens or anything like that. Um, but they did change what cards you get. As part of the core set. What the fuck is that? Hint. What? You shit. So some of the cards that were in the original core set are no longer in the revised core set. And they've been replaced by different, ty uh, different cards. Basically in an effort to remove some of the bullshit. Nonsensical trash cards or whatever. Stuff like that. And give a more coherent set for people trying to learn the game. You know, people trying to get into it for the first time. Um, and they replaced all the corp 
identities are the same, but they replaced two of the runner ones. Um, and I think it's probably a good change. I think it's more simple. So overall, oh, and uh, a lot of cards got new artwork. Uh, and some of the new artwork is really cool. So I definitely approve of the revised core set. I mean, really, at this point, if you're looking to get in a Netrunner, there's no reason to pick the original over the revised. But, yeah, it's dead, so no new cards will be printed uh, or will hey, come out for Android Netrunner. It's a long way down. But that's okay with me because I've only played with, like, 5% of the cards in the game. There's a lot more I can do with it. And, you know, I don't do tournaments or, or anything like that, so it's not really a, a big deal to me. Um, I'm actually getting the, the regular crew over on Tuesday for a learn and uh, play night of, of Netrunner. So, I will finally introduce them to Netrunner and we'll, we'll play some games. You know, it's... It's a two-player card game, which is not ideal for a game night, but it's such an awesome game. I really want him to get involved and get interested in it. This is really the only way I'm going to do it. So we'll just have some, you know, two games of Netrunner going on at the same time after I explain it. And, you know, if they get interested in it and they're, they're, they're liking the game, which I think they will, then, you know, we'll see where we go from there. I'm not sure. So that's that. Um, but all right, let's discuss gods. Um, when was your last tetanus shot? Oh, that's funny. <clears throat> okay, I'm in. What do you see? Something nasty happened to these guys. There's blood everywhere. And soup. What? So, we started this session um, on boats, heading towards the capital of the Patrian Empire. And Mert was not available for this session, so he just went away up into heaven for a while. And so there really wasn't much argument. I think Mert was the one that was sort of instigating uh, heading elsewhere aside from the capital. But since he wasn't there, there was really no arguments, and we all sailed for the capital. So we get there. I'm greeted warmly because I'm a senator, and I present the ships and all of these Vizian refugees as tribute to the Emperor. Huh. Now where'd you get this, my decomposing friend? So we're invited to dinner with the Emperor, of course. And in the meantime, we're chilling out in my villa. And I'm just... I think the trail just got you know, Drinking warm. wine and taking so? a bath. Well, I just met a guy I've got nothing else to do Spanish until we, we meet up with the, the Emperor. The coins are stamped with a mint mark I've never seen before. You're kidding me. Looks like our German friends had a little secret. And... But, of course, they had other things that they wished to do. I don't even really remember all the crap they were doing, because it was really strange. Um, Phil, especially, was just doing some wild, nonsense shit. Like, he asked one of my servants to get him a map of the city. And she brings him a map. He, like, rolls it out on the table. And he says, like, oh, I look at it for a few minutes. And Ziggy's like, oh, you want to, you want to, like, memorize the map. Cozy. And he's like, no, I just, like, am pretending to look at it for a few minutes. And then I roll it back up. And we're like, okay. And then he says, oh, and I, I note down the exact time that I looked at the map. And so he wrote down the exact time that he looked at the map. Uh, later on, he's like, he goes into the sewer, 
I'm in the captain's quarters. Oh, and Thomas went in the sewer as well. They were here. mucking about in the What's sewer. Thomas went in the sewers and he like transformed a bunch of rats into golden sheep. And then he led the a bunch of the sheep in like a nighttime parade. And I think like he made sure to like credit himself for the deed, like his name, so that people would know he did it. Because I think he's working towards, like, starting to build his cult. So that's more understandable. But what Phil is doing is just nonsense. He goes down into the sewer. Gotcha. And he goes to, like, one of the sewer walls. Sully, you're not going to believe this. Try me. I think I found our missing page. You're kidding. Looks like Drake and our German pals were after the same treasure. And, and he, like, hollows out right a it. part of the sewer. Hey, so he has, like, this hollowed-out little we cube out next to the, the walls of the or sewer. What? And then he has, like, a fist-sized hole you there? connecting the normal sewer Solid. tunnel to the, his little cube. And then he, can, like, he like teleports using his, his knight ability into the middle of the cube. And then he teleports out, and he, like... I think he notes down the time that he did this and then he leaves and that's it and we're all just completely fucking confused <sighs> that's uh, and there was like some shenanigans with a statue as well and trying to like glue something to a statue and you know, I don't know And then I think Studs was like asking around if anyone of the merchants was being like bullied or something like that because he wanted to do a side quest of protecting people or something. I, I don't know. Basically, there were like four sessions in one for a while with four people doing their own thing, except mine was just sitting in a bathtub. Drinking wine, so, so mine was pretty simple. Drake, um, a lot of and they sort of escalated so up to Phil's just shenanigans. Big, the find of a lifetime, he said. Well, I but anyway, so eventually we had the dinner with the emperor, grand promises before, and I did most of the talking there, of course. Again. And I said, Another you know, I explained to him privately that I'm now God, like a godbound. You know, I had the night road thing. <laughs> These other people so, assisted me, and they are also godbound. The time is up. And I said, you know, I don't Unless, know if they're really that loyal to the Patrian Empire, but we'll give them a chance. Even though one of them is half Dulimbian. Just give them the map. Slowly. And so the Emperor gives what me a new task. Map have to do with El what, you think this is a coincidence? The Germans were after the Basically, same that uh, he's to do with it. forming an alliance so, we with part of the Oasis For states, now. which is basically Egypt. Just in case you um, hey, they no, have like these giant pyramids yeah, that people actually live in. So he's forming an alliance with one of these pyramids. Now, whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on, Roman. In the hopes that eventually he's there can be a full alliance Sully! Uh, with the Oasis Sully! states. And so it's a uh, it's a marriage alliance. So he married off one of his daughters to a prince of the Oasis State, Prince Aladdin, of course. Stop him! And uh, oh, I'm dead. What the fuck are you doing? Roll. God damn it. Uh. So, Prince Aladdin and his daughter were there at the dinner with us. And... Nice. <clears throat> also there was Gulp. So, yes, this was a discussion that Ziggy and I had. Um, Whoa there, cowboy. Because basically... 
We figured if there was ever a RPG where we could actually handle the bag and the effects of the bag, it would be Godbound. Because <clears throat> a lot of the things that are in the bag really would not bother Godbound that much. Yeah. Or we Wait, could we, we could we could oh, handle I'm sorry. conceivably. Please tell me you have a gun. Um, of course. Oh. So we figured, hey, you know, it's the best bet for bringing back the bag. And so we did. Uh, how do I crouch? Is that even a button? Even a button? Drake, look no, out! Whoa! <laughs> Um, so yeah, Gulk, uh, is like, uh, you always seem to be getting shot at. not you exactly, uh, an know. advisor to the Emperor, but he's sort of like a special agent of the Emperor. You know, he's not part of the Legion. Uh, it's just sort of if the Emperor has a special task, then he goes to these, uh, these certain agents, such as Gulk. And so, Gulk is, uh, of course, also a godbound type character. And he has in possession, he's in possession of the bag. He's over there. Here they come. And uh, he, he actually has, like, the bag word. So he has some control. Eh, control is perhaps a bit strong of a word for the bag, but Ziggy told me that anytime someone reaches into the bag, he knows the effects of, of what they get. And in that moment, he can choose to transport himself and the bag, if he wants, to another like dimension his own little pocket dimension so he can sort of isolate himself from the effects of the bag Stay close. or he can isolate the bag from the world with himself there i think he he always has to go with it i believe or you know he can't just send the bag but anyways what the hell is this place anyway long story tell you later Um, so, Gulk, uh, of course, loves the bag, and, uh, but this is a lot more sensible Gulk than we have, uh, experienced in the past. He knows the power of the bag this time, and he knows he's not exactly in complete control of it. Bullshit. And, so he... For a wedding gift, he went to the new couple, put Prince Aladdin and the Emperor's daughter. And he allowed the uh, Prince Aladdin to reach into the bag for his wedding gift. Which is, of course, generally a terrible wedding gift, but could be really good. It ended up being pretty damn good, I would say. I would, I would take what he ended up getting in real life. So, we were not there for the wedding. So, Ziggy sort of, like, did a flashback uh, when he reached into the bag for the wedding gift. So, by the time we arrived in Patria, the wedding had already, like, happened, I think. So, depending on what bag effect he got, it could have drastically altered the session. Never a dull moment, huh? Just keep your head down. These guys aren't messing around. And so he got... Prince Aladdin got Reader Gains Dark Man trait. Uh, so Dark Man is a movie by Sam Raimi starring Liam Neeson. Uh, in which case... In which Liam Neeson is like a scientist. And... I, I have not actually seen the movie, so I apologize, but 
basically he's like one of those old school early superhero movies so he gets some sort of genetic thing done to him or whatever the case i don't even know and he ends up getting like super strength and stuff like that but his face is like all fucked up and messed up and gnarly and so i think he like he uses some sort of thing to like make his face normal but it like wears off after a while so that's good so shit so yeah so prince aladdin gained this trait so he gained like super strength and stuff but his face got all messed up so when we first met prince aladdin at, at the dinner he had like a mask covering most of his face And obviously he was not too pleased about this and his wife was not too pleased about this because of course prince aladdin was a was a handsome guy before this and so anyways the emperor tasks us with escorting prince aladdin back to the oasis states along with his new wife um because it's you know it's a dangerous trek and so he wanted to ensure his daughter's safety and to ensure this alliance's safety uh so he wanted us to to escort them and of course him being a, a, my emperor of course i agree and joining us for the trip was of course Gulp. Because you know Ziggy really likes having Gulp around, so he'll take any opportunity to throw him in there. Over here, I think. Yeah, this way. And that means a lot more bag effects. So that's good. <clears throat> so, um Pretty much, yeah, the next day we set out. We, the, the Emperor here. sent with me, putting me in charge, uh, a group of 20 yeah, legionnaires and 10 servants. Yeah, so we have this convoy. It's Kriegsmarine coordinates. I think I know where the Spanish took El Dorado. El Dorado? The problem is, so that the bastards... So we set out, Damn and it. the original the plan was to head they across... Had to there to that island, and Drake followed him. If you have a map of... Uh, Archim or whatever. whatever it is you can look after. at it. But our original plan was to head hey, to make a beeline you know. for the Oasis States, which would mean myself. cutting across Besides, a region called the Ractine Confederacy. I suppose I do. Which is a pretty dangerous area where like these like black mages experimented on creatures on and so now most of the region of is covered in these horrific monsters here to this tiny so island in the middle it's of it's a pretty dangerous ocean. trip across there you're gonna encounter Let's some horrible monsters look. and I'll we being a non-combat group even with the, the legionnaires there i just the didn't really love that concept and a fortune in spanish gold or does so the I island have darker brought up the idea of going around the rack team confederacy which is a much longer trek but we would go through Vizio. What the hell was that? Anti-aircraft. Basically, we we'd run so all the cool. way up the Patrian Empire, so that would all be good. And then we'd have to cut across Vizio, which shouldn't be too bad. And then we'd be in the Oasis. So a longer trip, but I believed a safer one. So the group agreed and we went along. And for quite a while there was no trouble. You just jump, count to five, and pull the cord. Now go! And we got to the border of Vizio, and all was well. And then we got towards the border of the Oasis State, and all was not well. Basically, Ziggy was having us roll to see if we had an encounter. And so, we did our second roll, and he's like, oh, somebody roll a d20. And of course, Phil immediately grabbed that die, and he rolled, and he got like a five. And so we had an encounter. 
So we're walking basically through like this marsh area. It just jumped. Count to five. Let's pull the cord. How hard could that be? And this crazed man runs up to us and starts spouting some religious gibberish. And so he like runs away from us and I decide I don't like this guy. So I use my power to cause a sinkhole to appear beneath his feet and he like, he dies. Okay. But underneath our feet, unfortunately, was a parasite god. Basically just a mutant abomination that feeds on energy and uh, generally feeds on things. So it converts uh, any humans in the vicinity to its cause, uh, and it eats Stranger's everything else. trying to kill me, leave my map on a burning plane. Plane is missing, most likely dead. That's great. Great start, mate. So we begin a combat encounter with the Maw of the Marsh, as it was called. Now, keep in mind, none of our characters are combat characters. We have not built our characters around combat. We possess very little combat abilities. Now, every character in Godbound is capable of dealing damage. Even if you don't pick any combat abilities, you can deal damage. Um, but not to the extent that a combat character could. But okay. So... I decide I'm going to use my one ability. I've got one effort left. I'm going to use it to have the good fortune of having a meteor. A meteorite. Whatever the difference is. Strike down from the heavens and it happens to land right in this creature's mouth. And so it does. But it does like three damage. It's pretty shit. Uh, my effort would have been better spent elsewhere. But anyways. Um, Phil, like, start, he like, attacks it, like, once, and then he runs away. He runs into a bush, and he teleports a mile away. Um, Prince Aladdin, using his new strength, starts fighting the monster. Um, Thomas is mostly focused on rescuing the emperor's daughter and uh and eventually the prince as well and studs he did something oh he boosted he definitely boosted all the legionnaires like morale and hp which actually was a pretty big help um because that caused a lot of them to survive. So that was good. Um, he probably did something else, but I don't remember. Most, uh, the important thing is none of us were doing that much. All right. None of us were really wailing on this thing. If Mert were here, he would have bounced in and just punched the shit out of this thing. And it would have been great. Um, but unfortunately, we didn't have him there. So things are looking kind of dire. A bunch of legionnaires are dying. Servants are dying. Uh, Phil is teleported away. He's completely gone. And all of us are pretty much out of effort. But finally, the creature apparently ate enough legionnaires that it was satiated. And so it closed its mouth and went back underground. Uh, we rally back the uh, Here they come. the remaining legionnaires because they a bunch of them had fled. And we're all back together. The princess or the the emperor's daughter and the prince are safe. And it's not too bad. We didn't kill the creature, but okay. All of us are still alive. And uh, our, our 
our VIPs are still alive. So that, of course, is when Phil teleports back to the group. He teleports right back to the group. And... My character, of course, at this point has had enough of this half Dulimbian cowardice piece of shit. You know. He fled the battle. He's, he's just... He's just typical Dulimbian shit. So I don't like him, and I want the end of him. But that's not really the whole thing, because... What follows... <laughs> what I'm going to tell you here... The end result was not my intention. Part of it was really just sort of having fun. Um, part of it was just like... He's gonna get out of this situation. He's a god bound. This is not that big of a deal. You know, I'm, I'm a luck god using one power. What's the worst that could happen from this? So I create a sinkhole underneath his feet. And of course, he starts to fall. And underneath him is the maw of the marsh. So it chews on him a little bit. And he gets a roll to try and get out. And he rolls like a four. Oof. Okay. I see him. Where these guys come from? Damn it. Uh, okay, he's taking a couple damage. He's got a lot more health, and uh, he's, he, you know, he only rolled badly once. Maybe you know somebody will help him out. Uh, whatever, you know, something will happen. And sure enough, Golk rushes over and says, "Oh, reach into the bag. It's your only chance." So sure enough, he reaches into the bag because he figures it's his only chance. There he is. And he gets uh, to paraphrase. When reader drops below half health or when reader drops to half health, they permanently explode. Permanently explode. Not temporarily explode. Permanently. So at this point, of course, I'm laughing my ass off. Damn it. I mean, there's... Uh, really, most of the effects... Or the, the most chance that he had in the bag would just be sort of a neutral effect. Damn it. Uh, really, it just would have been sort of nonsensical or ridiculous. Uh, not helpful, but not really damning or anything like that. There were definitely, of course, plenty of effects that would have saved him. You know, they would have teleported him somewhere else, or they would have uh, get, let him fly away, or, you know, who knows what. And, of course, there were effects that would kill him. So he got, he explodes permanently at half health. Which is not necessary, I mean, it's bad. It's definitely one of the worst you're gonna get. Because you're gonna die at some point. Unless you can avoid throughout your whole character's life falling to half health, which is... Not even something I could do. Eventually, you're going to explode. Permanently. But okay, maybe he can make it out of this situation. You know, if he rolls well, 
somebody helps him or whatever, you know, may, he can get out of this without exploding right now. But at this point, I'm just laughing because he got that effect and it's like, all right, I, I got to be all in on this shit. I need to see this happen. So at this point, I'm committed. I, I've, I've started this. So I have another effect that I could have used an effort on. Uh, where anytime somebody makes a roll, I can cause them to re-roll. So I was like, okay, if he rolls well... God. And it would get him out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make him re-roll. God damn it. But it didn't even come to that. He rolled again to try and get out, and he rolled... A five. And so... The maw of the marsh bit him once again. Shoot the kill. For three damage. Dropping him to just below half health. And he blew up. Of course, you know, at this point, I cannot stop laughing. Because I have, once again, indirectly led to the death of one of Phil's characters. And like I said, it was not my intention to kill him. I mean, I'm not that smart. Like, if I sat down that session and said, I'm going to kill Phil's character. It's going to hurt in the morning. If that's what I came up with, the whole thing to get to kill himself, that that's crazy. That would depend on the whole bag effect, and it's just crazy. I would have had, like, a meteorite hit him or something. I don't know, something. Even that wouldn't have done it, though, because that could do, like, four damage at most. But the combination of sinkhole, the mob, the marsh, the bag, it was just, and the shitty rolls, two shitty rolls, just crazy. Ow. It's just one of those situations that just came about organically. No. Bullshit. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, the whole fleeing from the battle and showing up right afterwards, that wasn't, like, a great thing. That wasn't like, wow, this is the kind of character we want sticking around. Um, but it's, that's not enough for me to kill your character. So, I'm being honest, it was not intentional. Now, maybe that brings <laughs> little comfort to him. It's just this disturbing trend of him losing characters because of me. But sometimes, okay, a lot of the times he brings it upon himself, all right? He asked for it. I said it. But overall, it was really freaking funny, so that's good. Yeah, that's good help. Uh, so, yeah, next time he gets a new character. We'll see how that goes. Um, and that's where we ended for the session. So, we got enough XP for me to hit level 2, which so that's pretty cool. And when you hit a new level, you get to add a new fact to your character sheet related to, like, something you did. So, of course, I wrote down that I killed... Uh, Dulimbian Godbound. Because, I mean, I guess that's true. That's what I did. Um, so yeah, level 2 is pretty nice. You get all sorts of new stuff. Leveling up is, is pretty good. Um, 
So I asked Ziggy, one of my ability, one of my gifts is salting away the luck, where anytime I make a roll, I can choose to re-roll, and I have to spend effort. And the only way I can get that effort back is when someone else makes the same type of roll, you know, using the same die, and I give them the, the roll that I originally rolled. So if I roll a 6, I re-roll to a 19. I don't get the effort back until I give someone else that 6. Well, you know, friend or foe, either way. So I asked him about it, and I was like, okay, well, isn't the bag just really a D1000? Um, couldn't I use Salting Away the Luck to re-roll bag draws? And Ziggy said I could if I spent an extra gift point on Salting Away the Luck. And I was like, well, I think the bag is going to stick around for a while. So that's definitely worth it to me because there are all sorts of shenanigans could pop up with that. So that's what I spent one of my points on. The other one I spent so that basically anytime I would be instantly killed by some sort of damaging effect, uh, I can spend effort to not die, which is, again, with the bag, that's a pretty good idea. Uh <laughs> It's it's a wild game. I, I think we're all enjoying it, uh, even Phil. So, uh, yeah, I can't wait for tomorrow. Should be a lot of fun as we get to the Oasis States. And uh, there's going to be some more bag shenanigans. Um, and then after tomorrow's session, we have like a two-week break. <clears throat> or a three-week break, I guess, however you want to look at it. Because um, I go on vacation... I'm on vacation all the following week, and then the week after that I after the week after I get back, Ziggy goes on vacation. So we've got a long stretch there of nothing, but maybe some Netrunner can fill the void. Um, I guess that's about it. Um, <clears throat> I've been reading some more Hulk comics. I've been enjoying that quite a bit. Um, I'm back onto his own series now. So he's, he took over Tales to Astonish. So I'm on the Incredible Hulk, like, 140, I think. Um, it's been a lot of fun. But, you know, the Hulk, early on, even at this point, you know, he's been in, like, 100 comics or something like that. Um, he's still very one note. And that one note is Hulk Smash. Um... He's not Mindless Hulk, which I think is a later development. But, yeah, pretty much every issue is just like... <laughs> almost every issue is, Hulk want to be alone. Why do they bother Hulk? I will go to this remote location so no one bothers Hulk. And then somebody shows up and pisses him off. And he's like, why you bother Hulk? Hulk smash! <laughs> and then he just fucks shit up. Um, which, you know, it does have its own appeal. Because he always just... He's, like, the dumbest character, but he's just so mighty that he just fucks all shit up all over the place. And it's just funny, because no villain almost ever realizes this. They're always like, uh, we will, we will, we will trick the Hulk, and we will use him to further our goals, and then we will betray him and kill him! And, and, and the Hulk is always like, I don't trust you. You're evil. I will smash you. And they're like, wait, Hulk. They're the real baddies. Go smash them. And he's like, all right, I trust you. You are a friend of Hulk. Hulk smash. And he, he smashes some shit up. And then they're like, all right, now's our chance. While his back is turned, shoot him with the Mega Destructo Ray. And then they shoot him with the Mega Destructo Ray. And it's just like, oh my God, it, it bounced off him harmlessly. And then he's like, Hulk, you betray Hulk. Hulk smash. And then he smashes their shit in. And it repeats the next issue. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> it has its own appeal if you like Hulk smashing shit. Like, in one issue, he, like, he picks up an entire fortress, like, with the foundation and everything. Like, he just lifts a fortress and he throws it at something. Um, and in one issue, he's fighting the thing, which is fun. He's fought the thing a few times at this point. Every single time, the thing just gets his rocky shit pushed in. He's no match for the Hulk, but he's like, oh, I'm gonna, it's clobbering time this time. And it's just like, no, go fuck yourself. You're not the Hulk. 
Um, he's like, I'm going to throw this big statue at you. And he throws a statue at the Hulk. And the Hulk catches it and just, like, grinds it into dust in his hands. And he's like, I am the Hulk! You know, nothing stops the Hulk. Um, but, you know, the, the one, you know, really the most interesting thing about the Hulk, uh, for me, is that sort of dichotomy between Bruce Banner, the reserved pacifistic scientist, and the rampaging, brutal, smash Hulk. And so having that dichotomy is what makes the character interesting, so these early comics, which are all Hulk smash, you, you don't get almost any of that dichotomy, really. Because Bruce Banner, he's still not at all in control of his transformations. And so Hulk changing back into Bruce happens almost completely randomly. Really, it is completely random. Um, and Bruce changing into the Hulk happens when he gets excited, which is every other fucking page. So randomly the Hulk will change back to Bruce Banner at some like key climactic moment when he's like about to fall into a volcano or, or some shit, um, whatever the case. And he'll be Bruce Banner for literally two pages at a time. That's it. You'll like, you'll never get a full issue of him as Bruce Banner at this point. Um, he'll be Bruce for a few pages at the most. And then his, he'll get excited and he's back into the Hulk right away. And, and then he's the Hulk for a couple issues. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of fun times to it. Um, and you get to see all the, the key Hulk villains in their earliest stages. Uh, and pretty much everyone is just a fucking moron. You know, he's, he's got the leader as like his arch nemesis, right? The leader is another guy who he, he had like the same type of accident as Bruce Banner, but instead of making him like green and super strong, he became green and super smart. Like he became as smart as the Hulk is strong, which is pretty fucking smart, right? But then you read the ish the comics with the leader, and you're like, this guy's a fucking moron. <laughs> it's just like he's got these insane, harebrained, stupid schemes that involve tricking the Hulk and things like that. And it's just like he, he loses every time. He's like never won over the Hulk or anything, and it's just okay. I guess he's not that smart. Um. But yeah, it, it's it's been a fun time. Uh, so I'm looking forward to getting to the more developed Hulk comics when when the character basically when Stan Lee stopped writing for the character, which is already kind of at that point. Uh, Roy Thomas is writing most of the Hulk comics at the point I'm at. But uh, yeah, he pretty much every character becomes a bit more nuanced as time went by. But, all right, I think that's enough jibber-jabbing from me. So, check out the Morrigan video tomorrow from the Exploring series. Um, we've got more Final Fantasy coming this week. Uh, more Dr. Decker madness this week. And, of course, the E3 Roundup, which should be a fun, lengthy video where I get to talk about FIFA. My name is Mang, this has been Hanging with Mang, and I'll see you fine folks next week.